Hello and welcome dear viewers to the video on particle size distribution and this video is the first video in this uh, series many more videos will come for in depth understanding about the particle size distribution in this video we are going to see what is d10 d50 d90 d100 and other terminologies like span and the distribution width so as we are aware about the particle size distribution particle size impact on to the formulation so basically the pharma professional deals with the particle size of apis and the particle size of excipients these particle size distributions affect the process and the formulation many of the professionals get confused between the d10 d50 and d90 and many of the people don't know the exact meaning of these terminologies so this was the reason for making the video and i hope you will get good understanding out of this video let's start with the esd so generally in pharmaceutical field considering the api or excipient the particle dimension is called as the particle size and generally the particle size is the particle diameter so different shapes are there for the apis and excipients the apis and excipients are irregular shape but still the tentative diameter can be calculated there are various techniques for measuring the particle size and based on that particle size that is diameter of the particle the psd distribution is given the pharmaceutical powders that may be api excipient or mixture of the blend or mixture of or combination of the different particle size materials these have different particle sizes and shapes if you consider the api it is a mixture of particles with varying sizes and sometimes the varying shapes the apis may be crystalline or amorphous the crystalline materials may be having some specific shape like needle shape or rhomboid shape or oval shape sometimes or they may be having different shapes so particle shape is not the part of this video the generalized information about psd will be considered the figure which i have shown here is the particle size distribution curve it is like the outcome of the particle size analysis so if you consider the particle size you will get different uh, particle distribution in this curve this curve is called as histogram now the particle size determination methods are there like dynamic image analysis is there the image analysis provide the number based distributions sieve analysis is there which is very common that is mass based distribution sieve analysis is generally done for the lubricated blends and uh, in sieve analysis the cumulative percent retained over some some specific sieve is determined then laser diffraction method is there which works on the principle of volume based distributions so for the d90 d10 and d50 terminologies laser diffraction is the method of particle size determination now particle size by volume determination that is laser diffraction first is d50 so d50 that means the average particle size whatever the powder material you have it will have some specific media median or average particle size so that is determined by the d50 and d50 if you consider for example it is 80 micron if you have a api co in your hand or api psd uh, histogram and the api psd distribution 
values in your head and if you see that d50 is 80 micro so what is the meaning of d50 at that time if it is 80 micron given in the coa that means 50 percent of the particles in the apis are smaller than 80 microns and the remaining 50 percent of the particles are more than or bigger than or larger than 80 micron in the size so 50 percent particles are smaller than 80 micron and 50 percent particles are larger than the 80 microns that is d50 d50 determines the behavior of the api many of the scientists consider d50 instead of d90 and some scientists consider d90 as more predictive so that is based on to the criticality of the particle size and real time experience for the specific product or specific api three tier specification is required for any of the api for phd specification that is d10 d50 and d90 sometimes d100 is also considered so d50 means it is the average particle size and here in this example 80 micron is the average particle size now come to d90 so d90 if it is given as 150 micron so that means 90 percent of the particles are smaller than 150 microns and the remaining 10 percent are larger than or bigger than the 150 microns then come to the d10 d10 if it is 40 micron that means 10 percent of the particles are smaller than 40 microns and remaining 90 percent are larger than or bigger than 40 microns so d90 and d10 are opposite to each other this is interesting to note that d10 and d90 are opposite to each other now we will see the example d10 40 microns d50 80 microns or between 50 to 110 microns and d90 below 150 microns in some of the apis the d100 is also considered and d100 for example i have given here as 180 micron so all the particles d100 means 100 percent particles are having the particle size of 180 micron below while setting the specification you should consider the different api phd api phd trained from the api supplier effect of that api phd onto your drug product cqas and stability processability and the specifications are derived based on the product requirement generally d10 values or specification is given as not more than four, some microns whatever it is here i have considered 40 80 and 150 as prototype example for only your understanding then d50 not more than 80 microns or sometimes it is given as a range that is between 50 to 110 microns then d90 that is below 150 microns and if you are giving a specification of d100 that is below 180 microns whenever you are going, going to give particle size specification always consider the batches manufactured with that particle size range their stability their dissolution if you are working on tablets or capsule formulation and if required the bioequivalence or bioavailability data many things are there which should be considered for particle size specification including the measurement techniques measurement variability and the analytical instrument also particle size specification and particle size determination method are very sensitive and very important whenever you are going for the regulatory file particle size distribution analytical method is required to be transferred from r&d to 
plant site or the site where the API will be tested. Many things are there to uh, consider and discuss. We will not go in that much detail. So now we will see the PSD distribution. Distribution or the width you can consider by the ratio of D90 to D10. If this ratio value is above 1 or larger, then you can say that the distribution is large or distribution is wide. If it is coming to towards 1, that means the distribution is narrow. That means the difference in the D10 to D90 is less. If it is wider, that means the difference in the D90 and D10 is, if it is wider, it is more. If it is string, if it is narrower, that means the difference is less. So this is the example of PSD distribution width. Now span. So span is also considered and calculated and it is also part of the uh, particle size distribution specification. Also, the specific surface area uh, may be given for the critical materials in terms of particle size as a specification part. So now span, it is the uh, calculated value that is D90 minus D10 divided by D50. If it is closer to zero, then it means PSD is narrow and powder is uniform or the powder is having good consistency. And if the span value is higher, then it means there is a wide distribution. So it is also a, a, a PSD distribution width. Now, we will see what is the importance of PSD distribution or PSD specification. So always consider PSD, it is as a critical material attribute whether it is API or excipient and why it is important because it affects the process, it affects the uh, drug product quality attributes, it affects the stability, it affects the bioavailability. That's why PSD distribution becomes very, very important. Narrow PSD distribution is very important because if you have narrow PSD distribution, that means uh, the batch to batch consistency will be there. All the API alerts to be used in the manufacturing will have consistently same distribution or same particle size or nearer particle size. PSD is an important critical material attribute and it is related to formulation and process selection. Also, the particle size and BCS uh, terminologies are related. BCS 1 and 3 materials are highly soluble, while the BCS 2 and 4 are low soluble. So whenever there is an impact of PSD onto the dissolution, that time for BCS class 2 and 4, the PSD becomes very critical. Also, for BCS class 1 and 2, Though the solubility is high, but still coarser particles if you get, it will dissolve slowly and it will affect the dissolution and solubility. Also, the manufacturing technique and the formulation design will be dependent on the PSD specification or the PSD of the API. So API PSD affects the physical properties, chemical properties, physicochemical properties and biological properties of the API. The physical properties like bulk density, tap density, surface area, specific surface area, these are affected. Sometimes the material develops static, static charge because of the micronization. The particle size distribution affects the flow. Then the chemical properties like reactivity is different for different particle size materials. Degradation pattern are different. If the micronized API get exposure to the excipients because of higher surface area, 
the degradation will be more sometimes for some of the APIs while the coarser material will be stable. So this may happen and this is very product specific. I am not talking this in general. It depends on the product. Then biological properties like absorption which is governed by the dissolution and dissolution is governed by the solubility. So the rate of solubilization or rate of dissolution will be dependent on the particle size. Sometimes because of the micronization impurities get generated, flow get hindered because of the micronization many times the static charge develops. So there are some problems associated with the micronized APIs also. The bioavailability is affected by the particle size. The manufacturability, processability and the formulation properties are also dependent on the particle size distribution of the API. Sometimes I have observed that the particle, particle size of the API has impact on the description also. So if you uh, have any experience on the micronized, part, micronized API and coarser API, you will observe that the micronized API uh, looks different color compared to the coarser API. So this may happen for some of the APIs. Also for some of the excipients. So this is uh, regarding the particle size distribution, particle size specification and their impact onto the formulation. So I hope you have got understanding about the D10, D90, D50 and D100 and how these things are related to the formulation development and how these terminologies are decided that means the specifications are decided. Thank you for watching the video. Kindly share these videos to your friends and colleagues so that they can have good understanding about these important topics. Thank you.